Parametric equations of curves. Now, curves such as circles and ellipses can be expressed in a parametric form where the angle theta or A is the parameter. Now, when parametric equations involve trigonometric functions, we often need to make use of standard trigonometric identities to eliminate the parameter. So you're going to have to recall Pythagorean identities, addition identities, double-angled identities, and factorization identities so you can calculate and solve Cartesian equations of parametric equations. Now, we are going to cover more of these next week. This is just an introduction now. So let's start with calculate the Cartesian equation for the following parametric equations. X equals cos theta, Y equals sine theta. Again, label your equations. And what we're going to do is we're going to go 1 squared plus 2 squared. So on the left-hand side, we're going to have X squared plus Y squared. And on the right-hand side, we're going to have cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. So what you should see here is our trig identity. And sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is 1. So that gives us x squared plus y squared equals 1. And that is a circle. Next example, again, pause the video, have a go. Um, a similar process, just a little bit different result. So label your equations, 1 and 2. Rearrange equation one to get that cos theta on its own. So x over three would equal cos theta. Um, do the same to equation two. So y over five would equal sine theta. So if we square those two equations now, we're gonna have x over three or squared plus y over five or squared equals cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. Again, we have our trig identity. So x squared over 9 plus y squared over 25 equals 1. Now this is an ellipse. As I said, we will look at these in more detail next week. But if you want to, graph it on your calculator and see what that ellipse looks like. In particular, see the relationship with the denominators. So that 9 in relation to the x-axis and the 25 in relation to the y-axis. Next, x equals 2 sec theta, y equals 3 tan theta. So label 1 and 2. So for equation one, do exactly the same as what we did previously. Get that trig function on its own. Same for equation 2, y over 3 equals tan theta. So let's square. We'll end up with x squared over 4 equals sec squared theta. Equation 2 squared, y squared over 9 equals tan squared theta. Hopefully in the back of your head, you're thinking of the identity which is tan squared theta plus one equals sec squared theta, or one equals, rearranging it, sec squared theta minus tan squared theta. So if we look at our two equations, you should be able to see if we label them three and four, that in order to use this trig identity, we need to go equation three minus equation four. So that gives us x squared over 4 minus y squared over 9 equals, and we get that sec squared theta minus tan squared theta, which we can then replace. So we get x squared over 4 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. Now this is a hyperbola. Now, again, we'll go over these in more detail next week, especially in relationship to the graph, but feel free to graph it now and see what it looks like. Final example, label your two equations. In this one, we're going to go 1 squared, which will give us x squared equals sine squared theta. And when you look at what you've got, you've got sine squared theta and cos two theta. 
So hopefully you're thinking of your identity. Cos 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So this is what we're going to have to use. So if we get our equation 2 and we write y equals cos 2 theta and replace it with the identity, so y equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, that's now equation 4. I'll come back and label this 3. So if we sub 3 into 4, we all have y equals 1 minus 2x squared. And that is a parabola. So lots and lots of practice, you'll get used to what to do given the parametric equations.